ribbit, ribbit. I cannot hold it, the last little toilet. I already sold it, ribbit, ribbit. In the rain or in the snow, I got the funky flow. But now I really gotta go. In the rain or in the snow. What the fuck? Born in the late 90s or early 2000s, 9 times out of 10, you've experienced a surge of rhythm games happening around that time. Everyone and their mother was trying to make the next big Dance Dance Revolution or Guitar Hero game to the point where it was almost impossible to avoid these sits, just like first person shooters, battle royales, and open world games. And it's funny to think that without this one franchise, we wouldn't have some of the rhythm games we have today. And that franchise would be Parappa the Rapper. And this series has been one that I've loved since discovering back in 2013. And considering that I've been in a very musical mood recently, I want to get love to the franchise that I brought upon that rhythm game surge. And for that matter, for the next two videos, we're going to be checking out some underrated rhythm games. So let's start off with the one that started it all. But before we do that, a brief little history lesson. The rhythm genre that we know today wasn't really a dang. While we did have some progenitors of the genre, they were widely primitive. There was the game Simon, made by the same dude who made the Magnavox Odyssey, which used a call and response system. Then there was Dance Aerobics on the NES, which... I don't know how to describe this besides timing, I guess. Fun fact, this game was developed by Human Entertainment, which, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about soon. <laughs> Other than that, it wouldn't be until 1994 where a member of the popular J-pop duo, Psy S, would go on to make his own game, that man being Masaya Masura. Development of the game would begin in 1994, during which he would meet American artist Rodney Greenbelt to come up with the iconic art. While they were working with a relatively small team, Masara already had a vision for the game, which eventually would become Parappa the Rapper. Released in Japan in 1996 and a year later here in the States, Parappa became a huge success selling over a million copies and is coined as being the quote unquote first true rhythm game. Compared to the games released on the PlayStation at the time, it was different. The game was very goofy in its tone, and while the game was somewhat in 3D, the art was 2D and had a paper aesthetic, something that wouldn't be done again until Nintendo's Paper Mario. But the thing that was really crazy about this game was its usage of hip-hop over any other genre. Now mind you, hip-hop isn't a big juggernaut that it is today, and hell, over in Japan, it was still relatively underground, and it wouldn't be until around the early 2000s where it actually start picking up some steam. But according to an interview, Matsura felt that hip-hop was the best direction, not just for the technicalities, but with how it sounded, with him stating that it was the most exciting genre to work with. Now, as you can tell, it worked, with many of these songs being memorable to people and even trending through memes years after his release. Now, the raps itself wouldn't be anything crazy, but compare that to the other games at the time, and this felt like the first game that had a hip-hop influence to it. So, uh, real quick, while I was doing research for this video, I ended up coming across this weird little game called Rap Jam Volume 1, which was technically the first hip-hop inspired game. It was a basketball game that lets you play as LL Cool J, Coolio, and even Queen Latifah. This shit is charming, yet... Weird, and besides Parappa, we wouldn't see another hip-hop related game until 1999's Wu-Tang Shaolin style, with the weird-ass controller to boot. Yeah, so I'm gonna review this eventually. In the Def Jam games. Eventually. <laughs> Parappa, as we all know, will eventually become a household name for PlayStation. But before we delve into that, let's see how the first game ended up earning the title, the first true rhythm game. And of course, we're gonna have to talk about that story first, or what little story there is. Parappa the Rapper follows the story of Parappa as he tries to win the heart of Sonny Funny. And if you are expecting more, then I'm sorry to say this, but this story is short as all hell. As we progress through the game, we see Parappa trying to do different things in order to win Sonny's heart. He ends up learning karate, learns how to drive, ends up crashing the car he ends up getting and starts working to pay for the damage, and even bakes a cake for her. And at the end of it all, he manages to win her heart, and they live happily ever after. Damn, that was like the quickest synopsis I had to do for this channel so far. Thank 
god! <laughs> While the story isn't deep, where it shines is with the main character, Parappa. He's a great character who's endearing, especially with his catchphrase, I gotta believe! Beyond that, he's just a normal kid who tries to remain positive even if a task he faces seems impossible. Plus, the situation and antics he gets in is wacky, yet it shows another side of Parappa with him being pretty mature. Instead of being annoying about certain situations, he finds a way to fix stuff without causing any more issues. And despite having a relatively light story, he sort of has an antagonist in Joe Chen. And man, this shit is wild. Okay, so from level 1 to level 4, we see Joe Chen, who is also trying to win the heart of Sunny Funny, which leads to Parappa finding a teacher of those respective levels. But compared to Parappa, who's doing relatively small things, this nigga Joe does some lavish shit to try to win Sunny's heart. He pulls up like he's some hero and starts spilling this long ass monologue. We see him driving this hella expensive car having the lady sit in the front, meanwhile Parappa is just in the back of a bunch of junk, and what might be the most wild shit is that he orders his 40 plus tier cake, floss it like he's the shit, and ends up making Parappa drop a cake that he paid for with his own money. What is Yet the icing on the cake with all of this is that Parappa ends up getting the girl, meanwhile Joe out here trying to balance his Eiffel Tower ass cake. Now kids might not fully get it, but the story really shows that you need to be more like Parappa and doing things from the heart instead of Joe who be throwing money everywhere to get what he wants. So again kids, be like Parappa and not this nigga Joe. Now the story itself is small potatoes compared to the gameplay, but before we start talking about it, there is something I wanted to bring up as a little TLDR. So, I like the gameplay of this game, but man does it feel slightly primitive to what we have today. Regardless though, I do want to give this game some slack due to it being the first of its kind. So, with that out the way, how's the gameplay here? Parappa's gameplay uses a call and response system with an emphasis on timing. When the teaser does its lyrics, you gotta copy it in time of the beat to increase your score. As you're doing it, you'll be ranked between four categories being cool, good, bad, and awful. At the start of the level, you start at the good rank, but if you make two mistakes, then you go down to the bad rank and later the awful rank. One way you can lose in this game is by going below the awful rank, which will make you redo the song from the beginning. But here's the dick kicker. If you finish the song on an awful or even a bad rank, you'll have to redo the song again, meaning the only way to beat each level is to be at the good rank, which is easier said than done. Trying to stay at that good rank will feel impossible as Parappa the Rapper is hard for all of the technical reasons. It is the first of its kind though, so it's kind of expected. Timing is wonky between levels, with some being pretty chill while others are as strict as a Christian school. It doesn't make it any better that the voice sampling for Parappa can feel really awkward at times. When you end up copying the lyrics, Parappa's voice feels choppy, which for me made it hard to nail the lyrics down. The best advice I can give is to listen to the rhythm of the lyrics, but if you can't do that, then try again. You can even quote unquote pause the game and retry the level, but don't press no or you're going to have to go through the levels again. One last thing I forgot to mention is freestyling. Now copying the teacher's lyrics will of course net you points, but if you were to mix up the order of the lyrics to the beat, then you can still get some points. This is a great way to not only make certain lyrics easier, but to even get to the cool rank which lets you press any buttons you want. And it isn't risky either, as if you fail two times in a row, you go back to the good rank. As for how it translates in game, like I said before, this game is hard. However, you can change your difficulty from normal to easy. Which the game low key lies to you as normal feels like a hard mode and easy feels like a true normal mode. Anyway, there's six stages overall for this game and it starts with Chop Chop Master Onion. This essentially acts as a tutorial level to show you where you're going to be going through. You might also fail this level if you're playing this game for the first time and yeah, just expect that to happen a lot as you progress. Next is an instructor Mussolini, who slightly ramps the difficulty up, but not by much. And I can use her to talk about the music in this game because, man, these guys' flows and lyrics are kinda corny, but in a good way. They're both iconic in their own right and are fun to listen to if you just shut off your brain for a bit. And to be honest, I do prefer Mussolini's level more than Master Onion. Next, we have Prince Flea Swallow, who is easily my favorite level for this game. His music takes inspiration from reggae and it shows with the lyrics that you have to copy. Oddly enough, this was the one stage I cleared on my first try, and the timing for it is really chill. The next level, however, was the bane of mine and everybody's fucking existence. Cheap Cheap the Cooking Kitchen. Fuck this stage. 
The timing here is strict and with the lyrics you have to copy, it's almost a necessity to freestyle here. In total, it took me around 3-4 to four times to pass this level and I barely did it on the last attempt. Music wise, it's okay, but she had the hardest bar in this entire game. The other day, I was called a little turkey, but I'm a chicken goddess, you beef jerky. That's called motherfucking bars, nigga! Fucking you know nothing about that! The final two levels are interesting, but can fuck you because they introduce two lines instead of one. And this ends up adding more to the lyrics that you'll eventually have to do. The fifth level is a basic recap of everything you went through. Master Onion and Mussolini has just one line that is entirely remixed, and when you get to Flea Swallow, it starts using those two lines. Now, I sort of like this stage, but had some whiplash when they started doing the little two lines because it felt like it came out of freaking nowhere. Now, the time here is also wonky though, as Master Onion and Mussolini has some strict timing, meanwhile Flea Swallow and surprisingly Cheap Cheap was somewhat less strict. Now this was the point when I decided to switch the difficulty to easy, and despite having to go through everything again, it didn't make this section and Cheat Cheap section a lot easier. The final level introduces MC King Kong Muchi, a long name having ass. His level is like the last one, but alternates between one and two lines throughout the entire song. But unlike the last level, his lyrics didn't do anything crazy, but I shit you not, he could easily outwrap everyone in this game. Seriously, do you hear this man's flow in bars? It's time for the rough fat night, and let's all pump up the night. That's called motherfucking bars, nigga! So yeah, Parabola the Rapper is a good game. You can tell that a lot of the gameplay aspects would eventually find its way into other rhythm games. However, it is hard due to it being the first of its kind, and as you all see throughout the next two games, it would definitely be improved. It's also a relatively short game too, with it only taking you around 45 minutes to at most an hour to beat, depending on which difficulty you choose or how well you play. But before we get into the next game, we actually need to talk a little bit about the PSP version. To celebrate the game's 10th anniversary, Parappa the Rapper was re-released on the PSP. It didn't do anything major, it was just a simple remaster with better graphics and some new add-on songs. However, I'm not sure if it's because I was playing on an emulator, but this version feels like it had input lag, which you do not want in a rhythm game. Timing is important in these types of games, and having the slightest bit of lag will cause you to do poorly, even if you're hitting everything right. Now, I have heard conflicting reports with some saying that it's in there while others say it isn't. Now, I could be tripping though, so if any of y'all have played this version, let me know in the comments below. And now, for the next game, which is going to be interesting, especially because of what it became. <laughs> There's a new rock star in town. PlayStation. The success of Parappa the Rapper had gamers and Sony wanting more, but instead of doing a direct sequel, Matsuro wanted to do a spin-off, focusing on someone other than Parappa. He and Ronnie would go back and forth designing a new character with an emphasis on rock music. And despite having conflicted takes on what rock is and what it sounded like, the team ended up pushing through, giving us Unjammer Lammy. Released in 1999, Unjammer Lammy was similar yet widely different from the first game. Whereas hip hop was the main music genre, we now have rock and its many different interpretations of it. Plus, we had the titular character Lammy, the newest addition to the Parappa cast. Now, if I had to describe this game to y'all, Hmm. Oh! Shit! That's this game in a nutshell. You know what? I'd rather get into this game now because I have a lot to say about it. And so, let's get into that story. And, uh, dear viewers, I normally never say this, but prepare yourself because this story is fucking something. <laughs> Um Jammer Lammy focuses on the titular character Lammy as he tries to make it to her first ever concert with her band Milk Can. When the game starts, he immediately has this weird ass dream where she is performing with Chop Chop Master Onion, who apparently lost his dojo after the first game. Lammy ends up freaking out as she feels like she isn't anything without her guitar, but ends up getting help from Master Onion with him telling her that anything can basically be used as a guitar. Short simplification of it, yes, but it does make sense as we continue. Lammy later wakes up and realizes she only 
only has 15 minutes to make it to her band's concert. And if you thought some of the shenanigans that Farappa went through was crazy, nah, he's beat out by the amount of shit that this sheep has to go through. She ends up being stopped by a burning building and has to help firefighters put it out. She gets mistaken for being pregnant after eating pizza and is forced to help a nurse put some newborns to sleep. She ends up riding the skateboard and somehow ends up in a fucking plane that's flying low to the street and she now has to help fly it with a dude suffering from DID. And after doing all of that, she ends up accidentally leaving her guitar on the plane and have to make a new one with this asshole. And here's where things get weird because depending on what version you're playing, the six stage will have Lamy end up in different situations. In the American version, she gets her belt stuck on the door and somehow, some fucking way, she gets launched to a volcanic island. But if you play the Japanese slash PAL version, see it's less on a banana and ends up in hell. Now the whole time I'm confused like what did she end up doing to end up in hell? Well, considering the fact that she landed a fucking plane on the parking lot, possibly killing over a hundred people, it, it makes sense. <laughs> Regardless, we have to help this idol with her show and manage to make it back to town through a fax machine. Ah, Jesus Christ, I, I, I'm done with this story. Lemmy manages to make it to her show alongside her other band members, and the game ends with them performing a fire ass show. God, I feel like I did a line of coke in eight shrooms going through the story. Now don't get me wrong, it's fine in that moment, it's funny as shit, but way too much happens in such a short amount of time. Never in my life have I experienced such a whiplash from one moment of this game to the next. Now in terms of some of the characters, I really just want to talk about Lambie. She's a titular character who I slightly like a bit more than Parappa. While I relate to Parappa and his optimism, I also relate to Lammy and some of her negative aspects. Oh god, that don't sound good. In the beginning of the game, she is very shy and unconfident about her skills, and as the game continues, she actually starts to gain more and more confidence, and you see this through each level. And one thing that I do really enjoy is that even after all of this, she still holds on to some of the stuff like, you know, being shy, which I enjoy. I often like seeing characters who have some negative aspects and improves themselves as the story continues. It makes them feel a lot more human, if that makes sense. Oh, and one last thing, when you beat Lammy's story, you can actually play a side story focusing on Parappa helping Milk Can prepare for their show. It's a very small story, but still cool. Other than that, though, the story is crazy, yet a fun joyride to go through. But I honestly recommend watching a playthrough of this game because... Jesus Christ. So... Oh boy. The gameplay from Parappa the Rapper is largely the same for this game, so we don't have to cover that part too much. The only difference is that instead of rapping, we're playing the guitar. There are some new additions such as a co-op and versus mode, which lets you play with or against your friends. However, if you didn't play the fuck out of the first game and or go into this game before playing the first Parappa, prepare to get fucked. Unjammer Lemmy is a lot harder, and while they managed to get the timing system down, Good luck trying to get through this without wanting to blow your brains out. And if you're digging to yourself that you can just play on easy mode, you're shit out of luck. On easy mode, you can only play through 6 out of the 7 levels, and you can't save between each one. And in order to unlock some of the other modes in this game, especially for the ones with Parappa, you have to beat the game on normal. But what makes this game so difficult? The damn timing. Despite feeling better than the first Parappa, Loon Jammer Lemmy makes the timing even more strict, meaning you have to be on your A game if you want to pass these levels. Not only that, but the lyrics contain more complex button combos, and some songs have weird rhythms that if you're not used to, will make things harder. Then there's the biggest issue I have with this game, the sound quality. The music drowns out the teacher's voices who holds the rhythm for each line, and while I liked the music in this game, it was annoying not being able to tell how to get those lines right. And considering you'll have to endure this for 7 levels, yeah, prepare to get comfortable because you will be going through them multiple times. The first level involves Chop Chop Master Onion again, which functions how it did in the first game, but instead of easing you in, it throws you into a pool of sharks hooked on cocaine. That should be enough to describe this level because it's difficult. Next is Chief Puddle, and while it's a little easier, I failed because I was too busy listening to this song. This was a common issue for like three of the songs here, and for this one in particular, it had no business being as funky as it is. The third level involves Captain Pillar, and oh my god, why the fuck are we using the baby as a guitar? 
This level is another weird one where I managed to pass it on my first try. The timing is more forgiving, but the speed of the song and the amount of notes you have to hit freaked me out. And this stage alongside two others were not my favorite in the music department. Now halfway into the game we get to the next level and the most wild of them all, Captain Fusion Pepper. Or Fusion Pepper, I don't know how to pronounce that one. This stage is fun, yet weird. The timing here is equally as forgiving, but it ends up using a lot of 16th note rhythms with his lyrics. And the rhythm sort of sounded like do 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 you know stuff like that. And, you know, as a drummer, I really love this type of shit so much so that I even tried to replicate the rhythm while the game was still going, and I ended up failing a lot. <laughs> this level here is my most favorite, if you can tell. The next two levels you go through is where this game really starts to fuck with you. The fifth level involves Paul Chuck, who as a character I really dislike. He reminds me of a type of nigga that sees you wearing a band's t-shirt and asks you to name three songs from them. But his level? Oh my god was annoying. His lyrics are hard to understand and similar to Cheap Cheat doesn't exactly translate well. The song is also the second weakest in the game which made replaying it hell on earth. Speaking of which, there's Teriyaki Yoko. Which is like Chi Chi's level from the first game if it was made to be on some more bullshit. What makes this level even more annoying though is that whenever you reach the bad rank, you will be assaulted by lightning and it gets disorienting. The stage alone almost took me an hour to beat because no matter what I did, I still somehow failed. And finally is our performance with Milk Kid, which was my favorite song to go through and just like Puddle and Fuse with Pepper, I was just jamming to this song. Now, after being the game the first time, you end up unlocking Parappa stages, which has you replaying the game again, but it's a lot easier. The timing here isn't as strict, and the lyrics are remixed to the point in which even the harder stages were less annoying. I still had issues with the 5th and 6th level, but all the other ones that took me 2-3 to three tries to do, I managed to beat on my first go. The only issue I had with this was the sound quality, which felt like Parappa's inclusion might have been a last minute decision. Um Chamber Lammy is a fun game, but my god is it way too difficult. Compared to the first game, this one almost took me two hours to beat, and by the time I finished it, I was just sighing a breath of relief. But besides the difficulty and some of the other issues, Unjammer Lammy was a more interesting trip to go through, especially for that zany ass story. Apparently at one point it would have been on some psychological shit. Which, you know what, I'm sort of interested in seeing now. One last thing before we get into, you know, the final game. Uh, Unjammer Lammy ended up getting an arcade port. This came out back in December of 99, being developed by Namco, who was also trying to make a hit rhythm game, even going as far as to make three other cabinets similar to Lammy. However, not much was known about this and it was lost to time, until earlier this year when British celebrity Jonathan Ross found the arcade cabinet. Now how the fuck did this man find it, I don't know, but the fact that this exists is quite frankly amazing. Now if you want to know more about this elusive arcade cabinet, you can check it down in the description down below or on the card up top, depending on which one I do. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's time that we end off this video with the last game in the series. <laughs> He's back. The release of Parappa the Rapper made Parappa a big deal. Anything surrounding the PlayStation often featured him, and when it came to merch, there was a lot. There were t-shirts, toasters, guitars, and even an alarm clock that stopped ringing if you hit it on time. But according to Greenball, the sales of Umjim and Lemmy didn't meet the same sales as the first game despite having a higher budget. And to make things worse, the rhythm genre was growing and improving with games like Dance Dance Revolution, Beat Mania, Bust the Groove, and more. Yet despite going to make a direct sequel to the first game, the hype for the franchise was dying down, and this was shown in Parappa the Rapper 2. Released in Japan in 2001 and everywhere else the following year, Parappa 2 would be the final game in the series due to its poor sales. Yet despite this and more recently, I've been seeing more and more people bring this game up. Whether it be people who still love it despite not being as great as the original, or those who were in love with the music. And to be honest, between the original and this game, I love this game so much more. The gameplay is so much better and the music, 
man, it's so damn good. Plus, this game has the craziest collab I've ever seen. Okay, not really, but if you love hip hop like I do, it's going to surprise you. One of the legendary hip hop groups, De La Soul, made a song for this game. And if you somehow don't know who De La Soul is, just know that they were the group that made me, myself, and I. Now, I can't play it because of, you know, copyright, but, but, this shit surprised the fuck out of me when I found out about it earlier this year. But let's not waste any more time and let's get into the final game of the Parappa series. The story for Parappa 2, while not as weird as Um Jammer and Lamy, sort of has two storylines going on. We get reintroduced to Parappa, who is not only trying to prove to Sunny that he is a man after being called a baby, but also is trying to stop all the food in town from being turned into noodles. Yeah, this shit is a mess. It goes back and forth between the two, but the noodle story only takes the most precedent, and that's the one I really want to focus on. To make a long story told short, Parappa ended up winning a sweepstakes to get noodles for life. He soon grows to hate it, so much so that even his signature catchphrase couldn't help him. However, this noodle thing is going further with all the food in town being turned into it. And because he doesn't even want to see a single noodle again, with the assistance of his friends, he helps his dad and General Potter in investigating and fighting against the noodle threat. Now in the background, there is a whole ass syndicate dedicated to turning everything into noodles. It's later revealed that the person behind all of this is the son of the bread burger master, this guy right here. He goes into a deep backstory with the most wild shit being that his mother ate so many burgers that she turned into one. Parappa manages to fix his ideology and the game ends with a final concert, not just celebrating no more noodles, but to also celebrate Parappa finally becoming a man. So yeah, this story is a mess. The storyline involving Sunny is another rethread of the storyline from the first game, and I'm not even going to defend it because it's note for note. But if the game went for just the noodle storyline, the story would have been pretty good. We see Parappa going through a situation with more stakes, albeit even more wacky than in the original. And something I found being pretty fun was seeing him with some of the other characters. I didn't really mention Parappa's other friends as they didn't really have much of a presence in the original. Though in here, they often help Parappa in or set of comedic situations, such as my son just shrinking motherfuckers or PJ being a fat ass. But I ain't gonna get on him too much because I too am a fat ass. Other than that, the story really took a back seat here, though as for the gameplay, yeah, that one is really just the same. Yeah, everything you've seen from the first Parappic game in Um Jim or Lammy is here and unchanged. It's more about the improvements with the game being a lot easier and giving you more freedom to freestyle. The only two new things in this game are Parappa's boombox, Boxy, and the change to how songs can sound. At the beginning of each level, Boxy will show up to show you a snippet of that level's song. Now on paper, it's great to just ease you in and give you an understanding of how that level will work. But in execution, it's just drawn out. You have to repeat the snippet 10 times in order to progress, and after a while, it gets really fucking annoying. The next change comes from the level itself. While playing through the song, if you get a bad or awful rank, the song will become a lot simpler. It isn't a major change, but it does make going through those levels a lot easier. However, the game is already easier as is. This time there are 8 levels to complete, and when you beat the game, you get a new colored beanie with each of them remixing songs. Now as for the levels themselves, I'm only going to bring out some of the standout ones, which is only about 3 of them. The first level I want to bring up involves Guru Ann. Besides this song Come A Long Way, this one is easily my favorite, and it's actually what made me fall in love with this game. The level is extremely chill, smooth, has this Neo Soul type beat to it, but the gameplay surprisingly handles those lyrics really well, so much so that this is actually the easiest song, or the easiest level in general with Parappa, that can net you a cool rank. The second level I want to bring up is Mussolini's sister, Moesha. Not to be confused with the show Moesha, though. Her level music is groovy as shit and has this disco sound to it. Hell, gameplay-wise, it's great, but not much to say there. And the final level I want to bring up is Colonel Noodle. This level sort of feels like a true rap battle, but the highlight of the stage is with this nigga's bars and, uh... Yeah, yeah, that little slippery thing tastes so good all the time. Absorb it, suck it, I know you all like it. Those are the best, no doubt, can't deny. It tastes better than water, but don't ask me why. Yeah, you're right. I'm up for some noodle sushi. What the fuck? No!
If you could tell from the length of this section, there's not really much to talk about with this game. It's a slightly longer adventure taking around an hour to two hours to beat, but it's just a retread of the first game, and this sucks because this game, in my opinion, does things better than the original. The music and rest had gotten a massive facelift and the gameplay is a lot smoother, but the issue is that the soul of this game is just a copy of the original, just not as good. And this right here became what pretty much ended the franchise. Now prior to this game's release, Parappa ended up getting an anime adaptation which was very slice of life, if I had to describe it. While the anime was loved for its music and charm, and for me personally, it featured one of my favorite Japanese artists, Crystal K, the anime went through some troubles according to Greenbald, and it sort of feels like the troubles here would foreshadow the performance of this game, but nonetheless, Parappa 2 would be the last game released and the series would remain dormant. Or as dormant as it can be, I guess. It's, it's weird. Despite there not being a new Parappa game in 20 some odd years, Parappa managed to live on through either cameos, TV shows, constant online discussions, and of course, memes. He was in an episode of Robot Chicken rapping against fucking 50 Cent. He was a playable character in PlayStation's All Star Battle Royale. He's been referenced in other Sony related projects such as Asteroids Playroom. And not to mention, he is constantly being talked about. And there's like hundreds of thousands of fan art out there for this man. And he is someone that people cosplay a lot. It would be an understatement to say that Parappa was still influential in some way, shape, or form. And this extends further with him getting a remaster all the way back in 2017. Now, while I've heard conflicting opinions about it, saying that it's not exactly the best, and some saying it's just the best in general, the fact that Sony still got this out shows that fans are still talking about the rapping dog. I love Parappa, and it was a fun time playing through these games. But there's one more thing I want to highlight, and this one's pretty clear, but it's the fan games created for Parappa, because over the years there's been over a hundred of them bitches. But the one that I want to bring a major highlight to since 2021 is Scratchy Melody. Now this fan game was created by this user right here, and while I haven't had a chance to play it yet, if you want a game that plays like Parappa and has a bunch of great future funk songs, then play this bad boy and support them in any way possible. So instead of doing the whole, should you play, so on and so forth, you know, uh, for this video and the next video, I'm actually gonna be doing something a little different, being more of, you know, which one should you play first? Cause with Parappa and then, you know, the next one being Space Channel 5, they're all great games, but some I do recommend playing over others. So, unpopular opinion, I recommend starting with Parappa 2. Personally, I love this game more, especially for its music, and the gameplay is a lot smoother. But it doesn't really matter as you can start with the first Parappa. Now the gameplay is still slightly primitive, but it isn't as bad and you can go through both of them and have a fun time. Now regardless of which one you start on, I recommend trying to get fully accustomed to the first Parappa if you want to play Uma Jim and Lammy, especially for how hard it can get. However, if you want to own these games, you have better luck buying them on the PlayStation Store because... Yeah, these bitches are expensive. Now luckily, the prices are going down ever so slightly. <laughs> uh, I hate the retro market so much. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching until the end of the video. Now, next time I see you guys, we're gonna be going over to space with Space Channel 5. <laughs> I did a little fun there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> like always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the bell notification so you know when the next videos are gonna be coming out. And make sure to stay safe, stay hydrated because it's hot as a bitch outside. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!